Okay, so unit A, part one, we're going to get into wood and engineered wood products. So we all know what wood is. For centuries and centuries, wood was the material of choice. We use it for shelter, fuel, transportation, recreation, and manufacturing. We have many advantages using wood because they are abundant, they are renewable, and they can be easily shaped. They are definitely aesthetically pleasing, meaning they look good, also strong, and non-corrosive. Composition and structure. So when you take a look at wood, we know that it is a polymer, so it consists of long cellulose fiber, and they are held together by something called lignin. So when you take a look at this composition, there are four things. Number one is a cellulose. Cellulose is a polymer, so you can see the polymer, all right, um, chemical symbol right here, C6H10O5, and it comes from quote glucose, so C6H12O6, and they're going to bind together for antonyms, okay? The cellulose itself is a C6H10O5, but then since it's a very, very long chain polymer, they're going to go n times here, yeah? So don't forget that n. I think in the textbook they forget the end right there, so just pay attention. Even some of the textbooks are not, uh, they're not perfect, yeah? We always have the one or two or three mistakes in there. They're about 40 to 50 percent cellulose, about 12 to 28 percent hemi. Cellulose, hemi is just hemp, so you have low molecular weight polymer. Then we have 12 to 28 lignin. Lignin is uh, another polymer, the hard morphous polymer in the wood or trees. And we have 5% extractives. Extractives are oils and silica. So here, just a review for your polymer chain. Your A is your linear, and this you can see the branches right here. Yeah. Then we go into the microstructure, and we have cells. We have fibers, and we have microfibrils, and they're all linked together to form a tree. So here is your lignin hemicellulose, here is your amorphous, and they are crystalline, okay, cellulose filament. So that's coming out, this little part coming out from this big part. And here, you're going to have your, from here to here is your secondary wall, okay. Microfibril is just one little part of the whole thing right there. And you can see this exaggerated cartoon right there. And this is your primary cell wall. And then this is your middle lamellar that is attaching this cell wall together. So that's just elementary or middle school or high school science, especially in biology, you will have to learn that, okay? So anyway, right now, just review and just know that we have cellulose, hemicellulose, and that's the material, okay, uh, for wood. Again, the boundary, they're definitely, okay, uh, linked together by another polymer called lignin. We're going to go into cross-section. So there are many different parts in the tree. So the center, we call that pith. It's just a really dark color, soft, and a sponge-like center. And so here, the tree stores the food and transfers it to the other parts of the tree, okay, other layers. And coming out from the pith, we have here is your heart wood, heart as in heart, K-H-E-R-T. Some people writing is like H-A-R-D, it's very different, yeah? so make, pay attention to that spelling. So this is the older growth of the tree, it's going to surround the center pit, and they have cells no longer living, so just dead cells right here, and it's going to provide the strength of that okay, tree. So next to the hardwood is your subwood right there. So you can see these little light colors right there. It's a light color, living cells. This is dead, and this is living. Next to the head, hardwood, and that transport the water okay, to the leaves. That's why the color is kind of light because of the presence of water. And it's gonna go to the trees and also change the hardwood as tree grows. Then we have a cambium layer, very thin layer. Because right out of your subwood, and that's the newest growth on the tree with okay, uh, with the cells next to that subwood. So here you can see the cambium layer just 
follow my laser right there. It's around there. Then we have an inner bark. It's right there. Okay, this little layer right there. And the another name is a foam. And that is just an area next to and formed by the cambium layer. And again, it's a food pipeline for the tree and lives only for a short time okay, before it converts to outer bark. So you can see here, this is your outer bark. So that's the area next to the inner bark. It protects the living cells right, of the tree, retains some moisture, and also insulates against heat and cold. And it's going to protect the trees from insects. Then we're going to come to the medullary rays. It's not in this cartoon. The medullary rays is going that way, right? Some kind of they are radial cells groups. It's going to radiate from the pith, extend to the outer bark. So what they do, they store and transfer the food in the trunks. So just remember all about food, and then all about storing, and it's all about transferring food, and all about moisture and the water, okay, in the tree cross-section of a tree trunk. So we're going to cut it this way and then take a look at what's going on in there and you see some rings. And we call them the annual rings because they grow every year. Yeah? So one, uh, each annual ring is going to represent one year growth. So you can count these rings and you can be able to know the age of that tree. So annual ring consists of, so when you pay attention, you're going to see the lighter, okay, rings and the darker rings. So we have a whiter band, they are the lighter color. So here I show one right there for you. Cells in the narrow band here right there, darker color cells. Yeah. Spring wood, we call that for the early wood. So the wider band which represents the growth and these growth happen in the spring. So the lighter color results from cell walls being far apart due to the availability of moisture or water and the absorption okay so if you see the lighter color remember the water remember the cells walls and they can absorb yeah summer wood is a late wood not the early wood because of the narrow band the darker bands okay so why is it dark is because of the dense cells and they have smaller cell cavities because of the less moisture in summer Okay, so it's really hot, so the water from the tree is uh, kind of, um, it's, it's, not the, it's not as good as in the spring. So at that time, it's going to create a narrow bend, right? And we call that the summer wood. So it produces uh, this kind of bend. When it turns spring, it's going to produce more lighter bands like that. Then we'll get into hot wood and soft wood. So... Once a tree is harvested, meaning like cut, right? And we're gonna process that tree into usable lumber. So what we do, trees are, they're renewable, so you can plant them. So conservation and restoration fields, they're dedicated to maintain the continuous supply of trees, okay? Because we can cut all the forest, forests down, you definitely need to plant them. So we we'll always have them, yeah. And conservation restoration is a big thing right now because of an uh, incredible amount of forest fires going on because of the weather changes. So all trees are classified. We have softwood and then hardwood. Soft. So that's the 75% of all lumber production. We're going to use it for construction. Yeah. And softwood trees, they're coniferous. We're going to harvest that from the three major regions in the United States. So the Southern Pine region, Western Wood region, and the Redwood region. So the Southern Pine is going to produce the short leaf, long leaf, and loblolly, and the slash pines, and the cypress. The Western Wood is going to give you the darkest fir, and then the Ponderosa Pine, Red Cider, your hemlocks, white fir, Sitka Spruits, and the Western Lock, and the Lodgepole Pine, and the Sugar Pine. The redwood is going to give you redwood and the darkest fir. Okay, so these are all different types of wood that you can be able to get from diff from different kinds of regions in the United States. So here is a map showing you the softwood regions. Okay.
country of the United States. So here is your key for that map in the previous slide. And here is your three region, and here is the species. And then here is your approximate yearly production, okay, about 16.9 billion board feet. And then 2.7 billion board feet, and then 6.7 billion board feet, board meaning like the wood board, okay, that we use in construction feet. That's a lot, yeah. So the lumber association, so these associations, they're dealing according to the region. So what's the wood product association? California Redwood Association. We have Southern Forest Product Association, okay, the dealers. Now we got to grade them. The grading authority is going to go with the Western Wood Product Association here yeah, for the Western Wood region. West Coast Lumber Inspection Bureau. My line is uh, quality systems, quality insurance, and quality control. So uh, if I if I do not can um, continue the academic um, line, if I will go outside and work, I'll be doing the inspection. It's kind of like a policing. Uh, you inspect if they are following the standards, or if they're if they product stay within the specifications, and you use the technology and different application to test them. Yeah, the redwoods again, the redwood inspection services for the California Redwood Association. Yeah, Southern Pine Region again, the Southern Pine Inspection Bureau is doing that. So Southern Forest Product Association. So these are the places that you can be able to get employment with your degree, okay? All right, hardwood, 25% lumber production, we're gonna use for furniture. So hardwood trees are deciduous, and we're gonna harvest that from two different regions in the United States. So the very first one is the Northern Forest region. And this region um, is gonna give maple, bark, beech, oak, and black cherry. The central and southern region is gonna give us oak, walnut, hickory, yellow, poplar, gum, and basswood. You do not need to know all of them. It just try to just read it and understand where the trees are in which region, okay? And that should be good. But definitely you need to know about 25% of lumber is hard and 75% of lumber is soft. Soft is for construction, structure, and hard is for furniture, yeah? Okay, now the distribution map right here, and we can see the hardwood tree regions. Softwood is, you remember, here and there, and the hardwoods is usually in the north and the east. Key again, your region, and then your hardwood. All right, from forest to mill. So we get the trees from the forest by cutting them down, and then we're going to bring it all the way to the sawmill. So once selected and then cut down, the tree is called log. Yeah? So logs are transported in the truck from the forest to the sawmill. We also transport in the train and also in the boats, cargo ships, yeah, river. So the sawmill or mill is where locks are turned into lumber or we cut them into different lumber sizes. Processing locks, first we're going to debark it and then we're going to saw. The debarking is nothing but just removing the bark from your log. Sawing is just we do two different cuts. One is a plain cut, which is plain sawing, and the other one is a quarter cut. That's called a quarter sawing. So here's a picture I'm showing you. This is called the, the uh, head saw, okay? And you should saw the logs into the rough cut boards. So cutting this way, from here all the way to the all the way to the end, and you're gonna get the board. So the car carriage moves along the length of the log. The saw cuts the log, okay? So here is your saw plate. That's your carriage, and this is your uncut log, and that's one is a cut part. So two different cuts. One is a plain sawn, and the other one is your quarter sawn. Okay. Plain sawn is going that way. Quarter saw is you're cutting four quarters of the log. So making cuts tangent to the annual range. So here are your range. We're going to cut tangent to it. And in the grain pattern. Okay, here is the grain pattern. So that's we call the plain sewing, and the main advantage of plain sewing is we don't have a lot of waste. Okay, you get a lot more lumber than the quarter cut. So the disadvantage is going to result the lumber, and that lumber may rock and also shrink. Okay, more than the quarter cut. 
so here's your quarter cut or quarter sewing so we're gonna cut radially to the annual ring see how it cuts that way and then the advantages of quarter sewn lumber they are less warp and shrinkage they have better wear and also reduce the surface tracking okay some students get this spelling wrong by spelling it cracking but it isn't it's called surface checking okay and then the main um, the main disadvantage is um, it has more waste okay? meaning like it got less uh, conservation and reforestation conservation is just a program and we preserve and protect the natural resources so we conserve the forests restoration is planting all right we plant the new trees to replace those cut down by logging uh, another thing that you need to know is a farm certification system and so this system support the restoration through through the genetically engineered trees and also um, through the effective forest management okay so these are like all the programs that we're trying to restore or reforestation restore the trees Okay, then we're going to see then the lumber. So play with the moisture in the lumber. So freshly cut lumber has very high moisture content. Okay, so here you can see how fresh that is. So lumber must be seasoned before uh, suitable for use. Okay, you have to, it's not very good to use. So fresh cut definitely need to be seasoned to be used. Okay, so seasoning is just a process. Um, so what it does in this process is reduce the moisture content of the wood. So from the green state, about like 4% to 19%. Okay. okay, so when we reduce the water content, this very first stage is to remove the free water from the cell cavities. So water stay in the cell cavities, so we got to get that water out of them. So after the free water is removed, the remaining water is in the cell wall, okay? And this point, we, we call that point the water out of the cell cavities, the fiber saturation point. You still have the water in the cell wall. So at that time, the moisture content is about 30%. Hygroscopic wood means that it readily absorbs and also retains moisture or water from the environment. So if you have like a humid geographic area, okay, you have more water in the environment, so you are expecting more moisture content in the trees in that area. So once a tree is cut into lumber, moisture evaporates over time okay, until it reaches the equilibrium moisture content. You cut the trees, the water inside of the tree, it's just going to go up, okay, over time. So equilibrium moisture content is just a point at which the moisture content in the air in the environment and also in the wood is the same, right? Moisture content is very important because it affects the physical, also mechanical, and the dimensional properties of wood. So if we're dealing with the quality, moisture content is a controlling factor for the quality of wood, and we definitely need to uh, play with it, okay, shrinkage. So we have sun and the wind is going to cause the evaporation of the moisture content in the wood. So shrinkage is going to happen more tangent to the annual rains, okay. Here, that's a tangent line and tangent direction, and these are your annual rings. It doesn't happen in length, okay, because of the greater loss of moisture in the cell cavities, causing the cell walls to move closer together. So if you have like a cell, right, here is your wall, and then here is your cell. If you lose the water, okay, from the cell cavity, what it's trying to tell you is the cell wall is going to come closer together, yeah, because you don't have your own water inside of it, so it's going to shrink. So that's what it's saying. So no longer less when you reach that.
Wood is definitely unstable material because it can change dimensions, right? It can change, it can change shape and uh, according to the moisture content in the air, okay? So humidity in the air. So the more humid, you're gonna have a different shapes. The less humid, you're gonna have a different shapes in the trees. Warp page is the wood is gonna lose and gain moisture. Um, then it's gonna twist us and bends according to that moisture in various directions, okay, and form distortions. And we call these distortion warps or warp pages. Okay. So warp can happen in cup, a bow, a crook, a twist, or in diamond, many forms. Moisture content also affects the mechanical properties. The mechanical properties are always dealing with the strength of the wood. So again, the quality of the wood depends on the moisture content in the, in the wood. So as wood dries, fibers in the soil water is going to stiffen, right, and increasing the strength. So the more water go out, the wood is going to be drier, and then it's going to be stronger. Yeah. So this is you see you can see how different that is. This is green. See this is very dry and this is drying. So this is due to increased density of the wood fibers. So the more water go out, the denser the wood fibers become. And the denser is more expensive. Yeah? And then, so density may increase as much as 20% from green to the season wood. Okay, so physical properties, we're dealing with electrical resistance and decay resistance. Again, it depends on the moisture content in the trees. So about below 20% of moisture content would definitely resist decay, but above 25% of moisture content decay can easily happen. So when you decrease the moisture content in the wood, the electrical resistance is going to increase. So meaning like the drier the wood, the lower the electrical conductivity and the greater the electrical resistance. Okay, the drier it's going to resist the electric for uh, propagation in the wood. So you can use uh, wood as a uh, kitchen uh, tools, cooking tools. Okay, so that's it for the uh, unit eight, part one. Again, wood in wood chapter is, is very easy. So you don't have to worry so much about the assignment. I believe you can be able to finish it in a few hours, yeah?